Hey, how's it going, everybody? We're here for another N4BB Live podcast. Today we've got Chris. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. I'm a little hectic. I couldn't find my headphones, so I'm working without them today. <laughs> All good. We have a very special guest today, Jay Colloy. How are you doing today, sir? I hate N4 BB podcast. I hate all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, thank you for joining us today, man. We really appreciate it, even if you hate us. But uh, we got JT as well. What's going on, guys? And last but not least, we've got Mr. Nico. I'm only here just so I can make sure Chris doesn't speak a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had a lot of uh, interesting news lately. Uh, last week was uh, the BlackBerry quarter four fiscal year 2015 earnings report where BlackBerry is finally back to black. They had a profitable quarter. What do you guys think about that? So doom and gloom, right? All right, go, 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 Nico, go. We know you want to talk, Nico. Go ahead. I didn't even say that. I didn't say anything. That was Chris. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Oh, that was Chris. All right, go ahead, I think that was me that was talking. Sorry, Chris. Wasn't this the second profitable quarter in a row? Uh Uh-huh. Did I read that somewhere? That is correct. So the the profit was small, right? But it still counts because it's technically in the black. Was there an inch or a mile? Yeah, it was four cents per share. Uh, and they beat Wall Street expectations by nine cents. So it was definitely a, a very good quarter. And unfortunately, I think BlackBerry is actually down today. I think it was down like 6%, but uh, <clears throat> they shot up about 6% that day as well last week. So it's kind of leveled out now. But uh, And like the um, one of the things that I think was really, really interesting about the, the earnings report in the pro side is how software uh, revenue actually went up, right? So year over year was up 24%, if I'm not mistaken, and quarter to quarter was up 20%. So that's actually kind of, it's a good sign that uh, BlackBerry's momentum in the software side is actually going where it's supposed to be. Um, Unfortunately, on the hardware end, I think that's where um, the sales dropped off. Um, They recognized shipments of 1.3 million BlackBerry devices this quarter. which is still way more than the 8,000 Morgan Stanley was expecting. So I guess that's, you know, it's still positive. But they, but they were pretty close, right? 8,000 to 1.3 million for JP Morgan, that's, a, that's, that's pretty good for their, for their record. So that's not bad. They were close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, I, I wouldn't call it accurate, but yeah, I guess you could. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I think... I think it was flip flop though for the the percentage. Oh software, right, yeah. But. You know, it was it was a little confusing. So it was twenty yeah. percent year over year, and twenty four percent from quarter to quarter. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was confused the first time too. I had to fix my the article we wrote when we first pushed it out. Um, but it's awesome that uh, we're starting to see the software side of the business uh, continue to increase. Obviously, um, you know, customers are feeling that. Uh, BlackBerry can also do well in software, not just and not just handsets. So it'd be nice to see them to continue growing their software side revenue, which I think we'll keep seeing with options like BBM Protected, BBM Meetings, you know, all these uh, great marketing or not marketing, but great um, enterprise products that they should be marketing to uh, consumers as well, because it's available to to consumers. You don't need a Bez installation. Uh, to be able to use those products, so it's really cool that they have all this additional revenue that they can make. Are you guys worried about hardware at all? Because this is another quarter in a row that hardware sales are declining um, from last quarter, specifically in the one before, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there's been, even though they're still over that 1.25 million mark, which is what in the last last week actually that was our over and under. I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, 1.25. They made that. They made 1.3 million in, in shipments. But are you guys worried at all with with hardware? Like the fact that the classic was out this this last quarter. That was the big quarter for the classic, and the passport still saw some pricing reductions and sales just weren't up. But what? Like I, I agree with you. I wasn't. I was a little scared too. Sorry, Chris. I, I I'm here to cut you off. 
So, <laughs> I, <laughs> I heard you on the last podcast, bastard. I, I heard you. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I was, I felt the same way, JT, until Chen addressed it and said that ma- the major channels just got the classic, and he was saying that um, actually, in the in the town hall he kept the town hall meeting he took for, after the earnings. He said that they're surprised as, at how well the classic is selling in the U.S. and they're, that it's that it's a surprise on Verizon and AT and T, and that the password has slowed down. Like he said, that it slowed down, but it's still selling. So, uh, they're ex- I expect their numbers to be a lot better next quarter. And the best thing, no, it's not, it's not a, it's like you know picking a victory out of a huge loss, but. It was good that most of them were BlackBerry 10. He said over 90%, right? Correct. So I guess we'll take that as a win. What do you think, Chris? Well, he kind of stole what I was going to say a little bit about the quarter and all that. But uh, that, and I'm not concerned about um, uh, too much. Because I think that we're proving that we don't need hardware to make money. That BlackBerry is showing that you can that they can do other things to get some money, to get some cash in. And um, I think we wrote about it, either we wrote about it or we were talking about it, that uh, software has a lot less overhead. Uh-huh. So it's going to be easier for them. I don't think that they're by means in, done with hardware at all. I think that they're going to keep pumping out devices. But I don't think it's going to be the bread and butter for them anymore. You know what sticks? I was on um, on cue to ask a question on the earnings report because I, I desperately want to know what the target um, hardware sales number is for Chen. <clears throat> Last year he said it was 10 million, and we wrote about that in um, um, an editorial how they sold 7 million devices all last year. Chen wanted 10, so I, who knows right now what the kind what the margins are for these devices that are being made? If, for example, the Leap, which is 275 how much money are they making off of each one of those sales and do they still need 10 million devices sold a year in order to be able to keep the hardware um, the hardware division profitable or if maybe then now they need 6 million maybe now they only need 7 million um, well they made, that's the third quarter they made profit on um, on devices right like alone that's the third quarter that they had they had good margins on on devices and the numbers haven't been big at all. So, and on t- and just just to touch on the leap, um, I had a couple conversations while I was up in Waterloo um, for my trip. But uh, they they they're actually going to make a better profit on the leap at 275 than they did um, on the Z30 on a discount. So a lot of people were saying why they probably made the leap and you know why not just keep going with the Z30 and stuff like that, but uh, maybe it's their partnership with Foxconn or something, but uh, like they will make good money on the Leap. Yeah, speaking of the Leap, you got to play with the Leap a little, right? I loved it. I loved it. I, I mean, I loved it as much as JC hates BlackBerry. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was, it was actually one. I love the design. People know that I've had the Z3 for a while that I was using, but I love, love the design of it, and it looks really good. It actually performs excellent. Um, one weird thing I noticed, and I don't know if it's because it hasn't released or not, but in the app, the Amazon App Store, right? It has uh, it had all the apps, like it had Netflix. I was able to download Netflix. I was able to download the Starbucks app, apps that are not available on any of my other BlackBerry 10 devices. It could be that the that because the phone is not live, it, it's actually you know they have the developer hasn't gone in to you know stop the support for it, but it worked really good. Uh, Android apps were really fast. The whole, the the entire phone felt really, really good. Huge fan. I'm definitely buying one. Huh. What color are you gonna get it in? I'm sorry. What color are you gonna get it in? Black. Uh, the the gray. I like. I don't like the white. Personally, I mean, you know. I used to be a white only phone. I used to like white phones, and then I, I got the white Z30, and it killed me. Well, Nico, since you're the only one that's actually played, only one of us that's actually played with one, do you think you would recommend that to somebody who has a Z30 right now and just wants, just wants a new phone? Like they just want to be able to have something new, or would you tell them to wait, not get the leap, and go for the slider? 
So, yes, yes. If you have a Z30, even though I like the design better, but, you know, it's it's basically a very similar phone. So I wouldn't, like, if you have the extra 275 laying around, go ahead and buy it. But if not, wait for the slider. But if you have a Z10, there's no reason why you shouldn't upgrade. I actually had a Z10 with me, like, when I was playing with it. And it smoked in terms of performance, and they both had 10.3.1. So I don't know how, because it's similar processor, but I could tell you uh, it was it was a lot faster than the Z10. So if you have a Z10 and you're looking to upgrade, the screen is beautiful. It's not bad at all. Uh, it, it Actually, the screen is better than the Z32. I don't know if it's the AMOLED versus LCD. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but it looks oh, yeah. a lot better. It looks a lot better. The colors are nice, and it's actually bright, very bright. I remember I had to keep putting down the brightness. But uh, if you have a Z10 and you lo- you need a new phone, you should definitely pick up a Leap, and you should pick it up non-contract. I mean, 275 is not that bad. You know, you sell sell your Z10, for example, for 150 on eBay, and then just put another 125, and then you don't have to waste an upgrade. And if the slider comes or another device that you like from BlackBerry, then you can go that way. Miko, with the rundown of what to buy, when to buy it, and how to buy it. You should, you <laughs> should just make a shopper's, shopper's guide uh, for the spring. Top five of all time. Top five what of all time? What? Top five phone? Is that what you said? No, dude. No, what's wrong with you? I stopped doing drugs <laughs> a while ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, that, that's, that, that threw me off for a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no it's, it's an excellent phone, but it's not a passport. You know what I mean? It's not a, it's not an HTC competitor. It's not a, I mean, the M9. But like for example, I don't know, I don't know if you've seen it. Like HTC made a, a cheaper version of the M8 called De- Desire, right? Am I saying that right? No. I think it's called yeah. the Desire. It looks great, right? It's a nice phone, and you could buy it for two hundred dollars off contract. And they sold, they selling a bunch of those. So why not? BlackBerry needs to be in that space. Do you, do you think that the sales of the lead would be affected due to the fact that they they gave a sneak peek of the slider. Do you think people will like hold back on buying the leap and just wait for the slider? Uh, I thought about it, right? But I'm not. I don't think so because it's not targeted for the same market, mm. right? And and yeah. if a person, if a person like the, we all know this that the the slider is not going to be three hundred dollar device. It's not going to be a 500 device. It's going to be about 600 and above. I mean, the, I had a we had a little chance to like find out a little bit about the specs. It's stacked, right? Like we're talking about the thing is stacked. So, yeah. so if you if you're going to spend if you're going to spend money, you're going to buy the slider. If you're that type of person, the leap wouldn't be great for you because you want the latest and greatest. So I don't like people who buy the leap are parents who might want to get something for their kids. Uh, BlackBerry fanatics who want a five-inch screen for a good price, and believe it or not, I think people who would want to try like BlackBerry 10, they would pick up a new a, a, a Leap for 275 just to give it a go, you know. And and the thing is, um, there's room, there's there's no, they haven't signed that dotted line, but uh, the only thing I can confirm, I think all the ma- all the carriers in Canada will carry it at uh, free on a contract. And I think they're working with a couple of U.S. carriers to try to carry it. I mean, nothing of official yet, but it makes sense. It makes sense. You know, you you get a phone really cheap. Um, the like if, if all those apps maintain, like from the Amazon App Store, now it makes the Amazon Store pretty good. You know, like all you really want is the ability to be able to download Netflix and some other like minor apps. So it's all in there. No, you're right. And speaking of uh, the slider being stacked, we can pretty much uh, confirm our earlier report that a octa-core BlackBerry will be coming out in 2015. Over a year ago, we uh, pushed out an exclusive uh, saying that there will be a, a octa-core BlackBerry coming up. And sure enough, uh, Nico, you found out uh, to, through some pretty good sources that the BlackBerry slider will be an octa-core device. It will be an octa-core device, yeah, and uh, uh, it's still very early, extremely early uh, from my understanding, but it's definitely an uh, eight-core device, octa-core device. Um, the only thing that I didn't, I wasn't able to 
to find out uh, if it was three or four gigs of RAM. I want to personally lean towards four gigs of RAM, but I just don't want to confirm something that I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, I actually saw, not the actual device, but, like, the person I spoke to actually works with the device. So it just happened that they slipped and told me stuff. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't... I didn't want to push any deeper into it. I mean, the, we we have a little understanding of what it is, but we'll wait we'll wait a little longer to make sure we confirm. But the only thing I'm 100% positive is that it's an Alpha Core. Yeah, it would be interesting if they use the uh, Qualcomm MSM8994. That one does support four gigs of RAM, so that'd be pretty cool if they could uh, integrate that. As long as they don't use that chip that uh, keeps overheating at all devices. That's so stupid, though. That's not even true anymore, man. I know, I know, I know, I know. They fixed it. They fixed it with the hardware. But HTC, some early prototypes, they were, like, burning up people's hands, like, straight people, up. Yeah, no, people also forget that the G Flex 2 has the same processor, and it never overheated. Yeah, it's software. It's software-related. It's just, I, it, it just it worries me because whenever something with between hardware and software, when something bad can happen... Man, if HTC gets some of the benefit, right? People, people heard that the you know the the problem with overheating and stuff like that. But everybody came to their defense when it, it, they figured out it was a software issue. If that happens with BlackBerry, they're not they're not getting the benefit of the doubt. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna get slammed for it, even even if it's something that's fixable and no, it never sees the public, you know, the light of public in in that sense. But um, for sure. So I'm I'm just hoping that that it's it's none of those issues in that sense. Yeah, I mean, I know that uh, it's actually been planned out for the last two years to use an octa-core chip. Or, yeah, to, uh, so it, I would imagine that they've had ample amount of time working with Qualcomm or whoever, whatever chips that they're going to use to be able to get BlackBerry 10 ready for it. I imagine it would probably be BlackBerry 10.4 uh, that might launch with the slider. I'm not sure. I know that 10.4 it was on, on track for a, a late 2015 launch as well. Um, but this is this is according to really old um, uh, documents that we saw, like in 2013. So some of this stuff could be uh, not relevant anymore. But it'll be really interesting to see, you know, the, the correlation between software releases and then obviously the hardware releases and how they flow together. Uh, because 10, OS 10.4 was the one that is supposedly getting the deeper TAT integration. I know um, the BBM founder. Uh, it was in in uh, what was it Mar Marmo, Sweden? I'm not even sure how to pronounce it properly, but he's been working with the TAT team um, to uh, to get all of those uh, different uh, things embedded into 10.4, the designs and whatnot. So it'd be really interesting to see if the slider launches with that. I know a lot of people were saying about with the uh, the 10.3.2, which we saw leak earlier and from the beta. Lucas, uh, we're getting a chat in. We're getting a question in the chat um, asking about the Jesus phone, the so-called Jesus phone. Is this the, is this the one, or is that a completely separate device? The Jesus phone is the Leap, because the oh. Leaps, yeah, the Leaps code name was Rio, and so before we even we announced. Oh, that's Leap, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So <laughs> if, you think of, if you think of Rio, it's got the Jesus statue. So that's what that's a clue that we were just giving away before we officially announced the uh, the Leaps code name. So gotcha. Jesus phone, yeah, just a leap. Nothing, uh, not we didn't use the word Jesus as like it's a savior device or anything like that. That's pretty uh, funny though. I'm, I'm not surprised people thought about that though. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, the slider should be the uh, the savior. That's yeah. gonna be a pretty hot device. That, it, um, did you guys see the front speakers, Nico? Did you get a chance to check out mm -hmm. that article that we wrote about the um, yeah, yeah, front facing speakers? Right. Do you think yeah, that's so a good it. idea to put the speakers in the front or what? Yeah. Why not? I'm sure it's I'm sure it's stereo. I mean, they're they're usually in most libraries they're on the bottom, but this, the, I guess the way the slider opens or the way the slider is, it made more sense there. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty cool too because they overexpose the photos of the like only two photos that exist today of the slider from the uh, Mobile World Congress event, and uh, it was interesting because they obviously they discovered the uh, front facing. Uh, speaker at the bottom, and then they also you could pretty much tell that the keyboard, the keys on the keyboard, 
uh, resemble the passport almost 100%. So that's led to some people hypothesizing that perhaps it's a, uh, a touch-enabled keyboard like the passport. Except for the fact that it's a four-row keyboard and not a three-row keyboard. So. Yep. So I'm I'm still skeptical about the fact that they can make that a passport keyboard, seeing as how it, that Maybe bottom the, that bottom lip is going to be so thin. Touch enabled. Like the so. Well, they definitely have to. Um, I know I think Chris you brought it up or someone brought it up in a previous podcast where if it is a touch enabled keyboard, they have to make the uh, the soft uh, software keyboard, the virtual keyboard have to match similar um, techniques that you would use for the, the touch enable keyboard. Otherwise, it'd be kind of a weird uh, disconnect going between uh, hardware and, and virtual keyboard. So it'd be, if it is touch enabled, it would be really, really interesting to see how BlackBerry tackles that, um, that dilemma, I guess. Now, guys, uh, we, we tried something. I don't think we talked about this last, last podcast. Um, we signed up for BBM Protect. Lucas, you actually signed us all up. Um, and we're using BBM Protect. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's right, not all of us, no. because somebody was late. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't know, whatever happened to that? Did they fix this? It must be an issue with your, your BBID, honestly, because I... Send out an email, don't be lazy. <laughs> no, I did. So, they said, Lucas, uh, explain, explain to us what happened. Explain to us what happened. What'd you do? So BBM Protected, um, it's... It's an enterprise-focused product that consumers can still purchase. It's twenty nine ninety nine a year. Uh, I signed up for it. Finally, actually got it uh, implemented. Had some issue with uh, with my company. I guess I, I had previously been uh, registered for some other products, so they had to consolidate all of those products onto my account. Uh, anyway, so we got BBM protected. Finally, set up and running. Uh, for some reason, Nico it it didn't like Nico. Um, and it just wouldn't add him. It would add him to the account, but he would never. He couldn't actually use BBM protected. So Nico, either you're using um, your your BBID is attached to something else that's not allowing it, kind of like Stephen, Stephen, uh, who also has written for us. He was not able to also use BBM protected because he was a previous uh, enterprise customer with someone else with another business. But BBM protected, basically, what it does is it adds an additional layer of encryption. Um, to your, the transit of your messages. So it doesn't do any kind of onboard encryption uh, through BBM. You still should encrypt your device in the settings. You can, you can do that as a security setting. Basically, what it does then is just uh, it has to create a secure connection whenever you BBM another person. So you can set it where uh, anyone who talks to you either has to have BBM protected as well, or you can enable what's called uh, BBM Protected Plus, and that allows you to be able to talk to anybody whether or not they have uh, BBM Protected as well, and it will still create a secure connection between the two of you, so you can still uh, have a you know means of communication. Um, but it's actually been a little buggy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I noticed for some reason a lot of times if you uh, initially go to talk to someone. It'll try to create that secure environment, but for some reason it just crashes over and over again. Um, I've actually been reaching out to BlackBerry trying to get it, trying to get it fixed. So hopefully they'll get it fixed. I mean, otherwise, I think it's a pretty cool product. I like it. Uh, I'm not sure from a security standpoint. You know, I don't. It's not open source, so uh, security researchers haven't necessarily been able to like try and penetrate the system to see really how secure it actually is. Um, but I mean. It's got a little blue lock, so it says I'm secure. So, if uh, and it and it yeah, helps you check on the creepers. Man. It helps you check on the creepers because that's, uh, because that's you, you know you know what happens. You know what happens. All right. And if any of you use BBM protected or any of you happen to BBM me, first time after you activate BBM protected, if you open a chat with somebody, like let's say you're just scrolling through your feed and you see somebody's status, and instead of scrolling, you accidentally click. On that person's, you know, status, it opens up a chat, and automatically it creates a BBM protected environment, and the other person receives that notification. But it also works vice versa. So if somebody is creeping on your profile and you, they happen to click on, you know, your profile or whatever, not even, not really trying to start a chat, but maybe just wanting to look at your status, your picture, or whatever, it'll start that environment, and you'll get a notification that says creating a BBM protected chat. So and that'll be kind of like the funny thing because then people are like, 
oh hey, we're just I was just testing to see how BBM protected work, and I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, okay, <laughs> like that's that's fine. But that's that's how it works, and I guess the the secure aspect of it. It, it, it works really cool that you don't have to initialize it, that it starts it up for you. But we just kept laughing because, uh, you know, with unintentionally, that first time that you communicate with somebody, it does that. But afterwards, you know, you can you can keep chatting with the person and it doesn't do it automatically. It just it keeps you within that uh, closed environment. There were a couple of bugs with pictures too, right, Lucas? Sending yeah. and receiving pictures are a little buggy. Yeah, sometimes if you send send someone a picture, it will actually crash the uh, the connection. So then it has to re reconnect. And then sometimes you can't uh, you can't get sent HD versions of the pictures. Right. So I'm not sure uh, what exactly these issues are. If it's because of the uh, uh, well, no, because you had BBM protected when we were trying to send pictures back and forth. So. Yeah, I'm really I really have no idea what, what the the bugs are being caused by, but uh, we. We let BlackBerry know about them, so hopefully uh, the team behind Media Protected can kind of investigate further and maybe fix them. Um, but otherwise, I mean, besides those two small little bugs, the, the connection issue and then um, sending the pictures, I think it, it works flawlessly. And I mean, $29.99 per, uh, per year, that's that's a pretty good price uh, if, if you really want to help uh, have that peace of mind of, you know, uh, data loss mitigation through uh, secure messaging. So you can't go can't go wrong. Now speaking of BlackBerry's monetize all the things strategy, um, <clears throat> we reported today that a new BBM beta is actually in the works and is coming this week. And within that email, they mentioned that retracted messages and timed messages are going to start being a subscription-based system. Um, there was no price revealed, whether it was going to be a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription. Um, <clears throat> but we knew that this was going to we knew that this was going to happen. Actually, we were expecting it to happen earlier. Um, in the original post that mentioned BBM retracted messages and time messages, um, they said it was going to be free for three months, and then it was going to start being a subscription. And it's been over three months, so it's actually been a little bit overdue. Um, now. They do say that if you don't subscribe, it's going to be you're going to be allowed three retracted messages and three timed messages, period. So, are you guys going to be signing up? Are you guys going to be subscribing to that feature? Have you guys ever even used that feature? Has it become handy? Because I've accidentally used timed messages. Like it, it's gotten to the point that I've accidentally hit the timer, hit the timer, and then sent a message that I w didn't want it to be timed, but it just it happened to hit it when I was trying to add an emoji or something. Uh, are you guys going to be subscribing at all? Uh, what I hope is that, um, if, let's say it does, your subscription runs out. I really hope that the button disappears and they don't leave the button there. So then if you click on it, then it tells you to sign up if you're not already uh, registered for it. Hopefully they can, they can remove the button if you're not a subscribing member. I've only ever really used the message retraction. Uh, I think once in a real life scenario. The other time I used it just to kind of piss off people because you, I know for myself, whenever someone sends me a message and then I see that it's been retracted, it like it just eats at me. So I'm like, please, like, what'd you just tell me? What'd you what'd you say? <laughs> and um, so I don't. You know I don't, what BlackBerry should do, Lucas? You know what BlackBerry should do? They should make a service that's like ten dollars a month that allows you to see retracted messages. <laughs> right, so like if somebody retracts your message, it's like you're paying eleven dollars a month just to see what the person is hiding or like retracted anyways. I mean, it's like it's like one and then another subscription to just be able to to see yeah, what the exactly. other person is hiding type of thing. A counter subscription. No, I, exactly. I'd, I'd, probably, I'd pay for that before I pay for uh, the message retraction. But I mean, it depends. Like it depends on the price point, honestly. If it's really, if it's Cheaper than the custom pin, which I don't think it probably will. But if it is cheaper than the custom pin, I'll probably I'll probably subscribe to it. Just an added, uh, you know, just to enhance the the quality of BBM and and the uh, the robust features of it. What about you, you guys? Know, my BBM just before Chris and Nico chime in. My BBM um, my BBM ads removal subscription. It's it's done. Like I didn't renew it, but ads haven't been showing up in my BBM feed. So I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I don't like it. Just I haven't renewed it, and it's still not there. So I'm kind of happy, I guess. I don't know if maybe it's a glitch. So hopefully it stays that way. Don't change anything. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Uh, I wonder like how they can check. I know. I know with BBM protected, 
there was some latency in having it apl be applied to your BBID. Um, so, I, I'll, yeah, it'd be interesting to see, like, even with the custom PIN, like, let's say, what if you stopped uh, paying? You know, is it an immediate cutoff, or how does that work? So, we'll figure Good that question. Out. Let's check that. Chris, are you going to be upgrading? Uh, I mean, upgrading. Are you going to be subscribing? Um, no, no. I, I've used message retraction once, and that's because I sent somebody my card number so they could buy me something. And, uh, I mean, timed messages I've used before. That was just like if I was angry and I didn't want them to, you know, keep reading it. And then I've had people send me time messages. And, uh, I mean, it's a cool feature, but not one that I'd pay for. Nico? Yes, sir? Do you use time messages? Do you use message retraction? Are you going to pay for it? No. I mean, I, 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 that's one that I, I don't really care for, to be honest with you. I, I mean, I know people might, but... I, whatever I want to say, I say it anyway, but I'm not the person to try to retract anyway, so. What about you, Jay Kaloy? <coughs> um, I've, on top I of this, I've tried it. Messages. <laughs> <laughs> but at, on time I tried it, it's like, um, when I, like, when uh, it was available, but, um, <clears throat> I don't think I'll be getting it, because uh, I don't see, like, I wouldn't use it for myself. Do you have any of the other ad subscriptions, like the ad subscription or the pin subscription? Do you have any of those? I was, I was, um, I was gonna get the pin, but then um, I think it would have been a bad idea because I get a lot of people add me on BBM already, and uh, it gets pretty hectic. So I think if you have a specific custom pin and people would know what it is, I would get like 500 contacts on BBM. So I decided not to get it. Yeah, I have that same setup. I have people adding on BBM all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I wish they would have made it uh, a custom channel pin versus a custom uh, personal pin. I think that would have been a lot better for brands, uh, websites, you know, everything like that. Um, but maybe we'll see I, them roll that up. You know. I love my custom pin, though. And, I mean, even if people be send it to me, I'll just decline them. Actually, I'll probably, I'll probably add them. I've never declined anybody, to be honest, so whatever. <laughs> I'm not as popular as you, though, for sure. Yeah, but Speaking I feel of, bad. Uh, uh, I feel bad because, sorry. like, um, some, like, I don't accept everyone, but then, like, after, like, probably a month and I have, like, I don't know, like, 50, peop uh, 50 contacts pending, I feel bad and I just end up adding all of them and yeah. <laughs> I feel you. How many contacts do you have total? Um, almost 300. Nice. I have about 425. Yeah, I have a lot. Yeah. How many you got, JT? Uh, let me see. I don't know, actually. Off the top JT of has about, like, 9. 294, actually. It's not That's bad. Not bad. Yeah, so I'm almost at 300, too. But I don't know how many of those are still active, to be honest. So I have like seven pins from Lucas and like four for Nico. So I don't even know if that really counts them, that number. <laughs> but uh, yo, in terms of BBM, um, BBM for Windows Phone got the first update this week. Um, they finally have channels. <laughs> I, I feel bad because like I feel like Windows Phone users. As I mentioned in the article, have probably been the most neglected of the bunch in terms of what BBM has like, had to offer. The UI looks cool, but they still don't have BBM Voice. They just got BBM Channels, and it's still in beta. Um, so, what do you guys think in terms of the channels coming to Windows Phone? Is that is that a big deal? Is that kind of like a just a not really a big deal at all? Um, maybe a little late to the party. I know, um, like. <laughs> Unfortunate, but a lot of the a lot of the bigger brands we initially saw support BBM channels has uh, pulled their support. Uh, like I, I know I kept saying Coca Cola as an example, and I know uh, I forget who it was. Someone told me that they're not they don't update their channel anymore, which is really unfortunate. Because um, you know if they had if they had Windows support, maybe it could increase the obviously it, it would increase the use of BBM channels uh, for those users since Windows. Is that uh, really catching on for the mobile industry? But um, yeah, I think it's it's 
great that they finally rolled it out. And speaking of um, and speaking of BBM in the earnings report, I know a few of us. Um, I think Lucas. I don't. I don't remember. I, I don't remember who it was that mentioned it, but I saw a couple people mentioning it on Twitter about the BBM uh, about BBM surpassing a hundred million monthly active users. Um, that's not what Chen said. Now I don't know what was mixed up, but we we reached out to BlackBerry um, and spoke to them directly, and there was no. Nothing in the transcript and nothing that PR or anybody in the PR team could recall of Chen saying that. So, and I think, to be completely honest, if BlackBerry would have had BBM surpass 100 million monthly active subscribers, they would have they would have had a blog post, we would have like gotten a press release about it, and I think everybody pretty much would have reported on it, because that is a pretty big milestone. So, just yeah, to clarify, that was, um, that's not the case. Yeah, that was, uh, that was my mistake, actually. I... Uh, I could have sworn that Chen said a uh, hundred, hundred something million, and so I just I said a hundred plus in our report, and then uh, I was reaching out to BlackBerry just to get a uh, confirmation of the exact figure that he had said, and um, uh, so I, I must have, I must have heard heard something else and uh, thought it was BBM, but uh, they are still standing by their 90, 91 million right now, so ninety one million subscribers, monthly active subscribers currently for BBM. Um, so I think it was at 85 million. What like last quarter, right? Is what they were was the official. It's been, it's been it's been at 91 million I think since since September actually. The they were at 89 um, in the quarter before September. So June it was 89 million, and September it went up to 91. I think it's pretty much it's been like that for the last six months. I think so. They've added and they've also subtracted kind of thing. So. Yeah. Well, so we also have uh, Jake Colloy, and he just came out with a uh, video a couple of days ago that we reported on uh, BlackBerry expectation um, versus reality. Hilarious video. I thought it was awesome. Everyone's loved it so far. Great job on the video, man. It, was, it truly was a, a great you. video. All of your videos, really. And uh, BlackBerry retweeted it. Um, everyone has enjoyed it. And um, Chris, he was the one who helped uh, get all this together, get Jay Coloy on, on the show today. You came up with some great questions uh, for him. Do you want to ask him some of those questions about how he goes about with the, uh, making the videos and whatnot? Yeah, first question is I want to know, I want to hear your BlackBerry testimony. I want to hear how you got your first BlackBerry, uh, which one it was, what it was that made you hate it so much, all the good stuff. Hold on. Uh, my first BlackBerry was actually this one, the Bold 9780. And at that time, it was probably the only like smartphone that was really cool. All of my friends had it, so I decided to get it. And I uh, really fell in love with the keyboard. Um, BBM was really, really amazing. It made me think of um, MSN, very similar to MSN back then. Um, I think one time I got... I got really drunk and I ended up in water. Not on this one, but I broke it, so I bought the exact same model because I really love this model specifically. Uh, I wasn't really into tech back at the day, but the day I got my Z10, that's really kind of like everything changed. I made a video in one of my previous YouTube, YouTube channels, kind of went viral, and then I posted it again on the channel that I have now. And ever since, I just... I just started making videos about BlackBerry. So what was it that made you want to start making the videos? All the haters. All the haters at work. Everyone that didn't like it. And I was probably like the first one to have a BlackBerry 10 device at my job. And then um, I just I just wanted to make a video. I didn't I didn't think of much of it. Like I just wanted to do it. I posted it. It got um, I think it got featured on Prairie, and um, yeah, from there on, I just kind of just like took off. Speaking of the haters, what kind of what kind of feedback do you get from people? What do they? How do they respond? You, I'm guessing you get uh, you get people from both sides of the camp uh, commenting on your work. Well, it's. It's really related to like my previous video that I just uh, made the expectation versus reality because a lot of people that I con converse with, 
it's either they barely know anything about BlackBerry, like saying that they're they're dead, stuff like that, and I I just try not to con like talk to them about it because if they're already misinformed, there's no point in like arguing with them because they already have like this kind of tunnel vision that BlackBerry's outdated. It just looks like this, like they don't even know the passports exist, you know. Speaking of which, you have a gorgeous, gorgeous looking passport that you custom added for with with uh, carbon fiber vinyl, right? Yeah, I did. I have it here. Um, I've mentioned it in my previous videos, but um, I was trying to buy one online. Uh, the first um, one I was trying to buy, I couldn't get it to ship in Canada. The second one was from Phantom Skins. It was forty bucks, and I think that was kind of pricey for me to uh, pay forty bucks for a skin. So I just I just decided to buy a sheet, like a big sheet. I think it was forty feet, and I just ended up cutting it myself and uh, sticking it up together on my passport. You did a great job. I love how you uh, added it next to the the keyboard as well, and individually yeah. with the fret on this side here. Yeah, he was telling me earlier that the 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 skin that Phantom Skin sells kind of stops a little bit before the edge, but his goes all the way to the edge. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's it's because from what I've read, it kind of it's it doesn't fit exactly just because the phone curves, and I think um, it would probably collect dust or something like that, so they leave a bit of gap or something. So, Jay Kaloy, when are you going to start selling these skins? <laughs> Make a I business out of it. I Jay Kaloy skins. I'm ready. <laughs> I mean, oh, I, I could, could just say, I, it could just say, like, I hate Blackberry on the back. Dude. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's really hard to make fine cuts. As you can see, I couldn't cut out the, um, the Blackberry logo in the back. Because you hate Blackberry, so, I mean, it, naturally, it, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I could, I could maybe cut out a few and then send it to you guys, so then you guys could probably check it out. Maybe we can have a contest, so, so uh, give away some custom uh, colloid skins, autographed, yeah. made by the man himself, <laughs> the second greatest Blackberry hater in the world. Yeah, just like, so, yeah, that's. JT has that spot locked. You guys man. are idiots. You guys are such idiots. That's. It's kind of amazing. What, the minute he said the second one, I was like, what? Who's up? Oh, wait, he's talking about me. <laughs> JT, what is, JT, that's a cool t-shirt. What is it? Oh, that, this is FlexKey. This is a, uh, this is one of my, this is actually my favorite keyboard uh, company. Uh, they make and, some and amazing that, Android and iOS keyboards. So. Right, wow. so there you go. That's and they sent me a shirt. They sent me a shirt, wow. so. <laughs> Gotta rock it. Sold out wow. for, a, for, a, for a shirt. <laughs> Next question, Chris. What you got? Next question. Next question. Before people start getting stones for JT, <laughs> uh, do you have any ideas for uh, upcoming videos? Um, I usually um, just write up a bunch of ideas because, like, right now I probably have like seven ideas right now. Just I like to have them stacked so. I don't want to like make a video and then think about it for like the next few weeks and not have anything to deliver. So I try to always have like a bunch of videos ready to do. That's cool. I do you just have, uh... go ahead, right, sorry. Chris, sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I, I saw one of your tweets. Uh, you said you will not be making a classic video. <laughs> and I, I was I was wondering is, is it because you're not a fan of the device or is it like fuck it I've wasted enough money on these devices I need a break. <laughs> it's more like the second reason that you, <laughs> that you just said. I understand, man. I understand. Because <laughs> like I could probably make a video like showing pictures of it, but I think it wouldn't be as yeah. good and relevant as if I didn't have the actual device in my hands and it would lack the credibility of what I'm saying because I didn't really test it out, so. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, about how long does it usually take you to make your videos? Uh, it really depends, because I got, if, like, probably a, if I scrammed it up, probably a good day, like 10 hours. Oh, that's not bad. 
Is that that includes editing as well? Yeah, it's uh, three hours of the filming, then editing for the rest, and then if I have to reshoot stuff like that. Nice. All right. Why did you do an iPhone video? Why do an iPhone video? Yeah. Well, I, I did an iPhone video, but it's kind of like against it, so I thought it was kind of relevant to the BlackBerry topics that I still have, so <laughs> that's why I did one, and I think it, it was funny. It was great, actually. It was, a, it was a funny one. What did people say about that one? I'd stay away from the comment section on YouTube. It's, it's <laughs> well, I, I kind of purposely made that video because since iPhone videos are already popular, I knew that it would get a lot of views from iPhone viewers and BlackBerry users, knowing that they would know that I danced it, but then people or iPhone users wouldn't know that I'm a BlackBerry fan. So it, it kind of plays in that realm of like like having both uh, users viewing my videos. Has most of the response you've gotten like positive? Because you've gone... You know, you've shown not just videos about BlackBerry. You've had like a very personal video, I think, the other day where it was your birthday, if I'm not mistaken, with your girlfriend and that awesome Pokédex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, do, do, do you, you know, for example, every time JT says something, he'll get like 300 hate tweets. Uh, I was wondering, like, has it all been positive for you? Most of the time, like let's say 80, 20, 80 percent positive, then after there'll be the internet trolls always coming along just to say random things and stuff like that. I got you. As long as it's good stuff, man. Good videos. Thank you. And there's always there's always that group of people that just live under the bridge and want to be trolls. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, Come he on, did. Man. Come on, man. We're on a podcast. We're crazy. I'm just speaking of generalities. We're gonna get hacked. Then four babies gonna get hacked. <laughs> Jay, uh, let me just read to you one of my favorite, probably my favorite comment from uh, your latest "Why I Love the iPhone 6" video. It says, "Hi right. JC, I am Kim Jong Un, Supreme Leader of True Korea. <laughs> After watching your video, I'm gonna strap my iPhone 6 to one of my intercontinental ballistic missiles and send it back to those dirty American imperialistic pig dog capitalist scums." In California, so that is the. Uh, just so you, you know, did it, you did it. You, <laughs> you made, it. You, made it. it. you made it, bro. <laughs> so, like, a lot of people know you for the videos, but you obviously a BlackBerry fan yourself. Uh, what is your personal outlook of the company? Like, what do you think of BlackBerry as it is today? What are some of your hopes and expectations? Uh, Device-wise, I think it's probably the best communication tool. I think they, they got it hands down. Like, their operating system, they made it in a way so that you could really communicate effectively. And one of the best examples that I could probably give you guys is, like, um, I was video chatting with my girlfriend, and we wanted to watch a movie the next day. And we did screen share, and there was a bunch of movies that we didn't know what it was about, so we ended up watching the trailers together at the same time as we screen, screen shared. So I think that was a, like a really cool feature because we get to see it at the same time and give our judgment upon what movie to choose. So I think BlackBerry does that really, really awesome. But the thing that I really disagree or I think they could improve on is their marketing in general. Um, I think it could be a lot better because I watch a lot of reviews from Samsung and iPhone and I, f I think you mentioned how like the leap was targeted to like let's say moms, dads and stuff like that. Um, I think the Note 4, I don't know if you guys have seen it, they made these series where it says Note Mom, Note Dad, Note Brother, Sister. So they made videos specifically for a certain group or a certain person in the family so I think that was a really good commercial from Samsung, but I'd like to see BlackBerry to do something similar or along that path of like cinematic commercials. I would agree. The only thing is, they're afraid, that's the problem with BlackBerry. They're afraid to. They have to, everything they do has to be uh, like enterprise, right? Like the Leap yeah. commercial is about 
of a, you know, you're a young entrepreneur or whatever. But, yeah, I think the leap is more targeted for youth, right? Like young people oh. who might want to try a BlackBerry and stuff like that, but if they if they market it like that, they'll get killed too. Like how you market this to young people with no apps, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Even even though they're there, but still. Yeah, I think one of my favorite BlackBerry uh, commercials is the one with um, the Q5. Which one's that? Where, uh, where I think there was this guy. He had a like a red Q5, and he was like biking, and then he did like a video chat with his friend, and then. Each color kind of related to a different type of teenager. I'm, I never saw that. I'm gonna search okay. for it. That's probably, 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 that. That's probably part of the problem that there's a great BlackBerry commercial out there and nobody's ever seen it. I've only seen two great, two, two good commercials. One was the Q and X one, where you know you see everything in powers and how it comes up to the Z. -tank. That wasn't even a BlackBerry commercial. That was a fan-made commercial. No, no, it wasn't. It was a BlackBerry commercial. It was a BlackBerry made video. Oh no, you're talking about the second one. Yeah, you know what? I always think about the first one, the one that people made um, to replace a Super Bowl ad. Remember? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. Sorry, no. I got mixed up. That was yeah. Not yeah, yeah. The they never actually aired that video though. That's the problem. They never used it on. No, they used it only for their for their events. That's it. Yeah, and stuff, and yeah. then they had they had the greatest BB7 commercial ever in Indonesia. Whereas, oh, um, with the family that he's like walking yes. and he like and he like talks to everybody and there's people like sitting down all around him and they all have different BB7 different devices. BB7. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that commercial. Where it says like we have a device for everybody. You know, the dad had the 9900, the kids had the Curve and the 9860. It was pretty cool. And everybody was doing battery pulls at the same time. You know, like a family. <laughs> Yeah, I still, I, uh, I remember, do you guys remember the, uh, the bike, the, like the, the glow bike? Glowing bikes, yeah. I That's remember, it, 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 but it was cool, it was a great commercial, it was very well done, shot well. For bikes, I remember getting crazy amounts of emails about where to buy the bikes. <laughs> exactly. We, we saw a huge traffic spike, like, throughout the, like, month or two after that commercial, and uh, one of our leading search terms was, like, glow bike, like, buy glow bike or whatever. So people, unfortunately, were just looking for the, the glow bikes and not actually the BlackBerry. So that kind of sucked. But um, no, you're right. You're right, Jake. Well, they, they could definitely uh, work differently on their marketing. I know they brought in uh, a marketing house. I forget the name of it off the top of my head at the moment. Uh, I actually they think they, they got rid of all marketing now. I think... No, I, they have, uh, they have uh, a marketing SVP. Um, and he was actually one of the last events that we did. I think he was at the classic event, if I'm not mistaken. Mark Wilson? Um, is it Mark Wilson? Yeah. yeah but he's no, he left. He's on a different role now. Oh, he he did? Yeah, he's not. He's, he's on a different role. Well, so much for that, because when we interviewed him that one time, he, he told us that BlackBerry, and this is the, the headline from the article that we wrote, BlackBerry's future marketing plans will involve traditional campaigns, like commercials and things like that. We still haven't um, haven't seen that that stuff, but I guess like like with everything, Chen is very conservative in terms of money. So um, if well, if you didn't have no money, you'd be conservative too. Well, they have three, yes, they three have billion cash. They have three yeah, billion yeah. dollars in cash. I'd be happy with three billion dollars. Yeah, but that's the thing. He's also probably have a payroll of like five hundred million a quarter. So you got a stash, you know. It's it's not it's not an easy. Yes, it's a great number to have, but they also have 1.4 billion in debt, and they also have a very high expense. You know what I mean? R and D and all that stuff. So they really don't. They need to generate more money. Stickers, yeah. bro. <laughs> so, I mean, they've been doing a great job with like the way their marketing currently is at the moment. You know, it's just pushing out YouTube videos or getting a full-page ad in a newspaper. That's really all that we've really kind of seen. Um, Aside from obvious uh, other promotionals through Twitter and whatnot, but I mean, I mean, they're getting back to profitability. And if you're in the enterprise, you have probably heard of BlackBerry, you know, Bez, and and now the MDM solution. So I don't necessarily think they really need to market like what we would hope to as a consumer with a TV commercial. Like, I don't think they're there yet right now. You know, they should have done that. Uh, obviously, with the the Super Bowl commercial, should have made a better one, not the the uh, here's 30 seconds of what 
our devices can't do. Um, so I think I think it's okay. They're not they're not at a time right now where uh, they have to push out TV commercials like what we would see with an Apple. You know, trying to connect to that emotional level. But they do, right? Because this is a thing, and we've don't, we've talked about it quite a lot. Sorry, I'm a little sick. Um, no, there is there that that customer that used to buy BlackBerry only, the, like doesn't exist anymore. My my parents were 55 years old, never used technology, are using Blackberries and they know how to do it. And now my mom spends four hours a day watching TV shows from Greece because she's and you know she knows what the phones can do. A father who's working in the industry wants a phone that's secure, but a phone that also could cater to his kids when he goes home and he could watch a video and stuff like that. A lot of the things that BlackBerry does, and they need to market that. Do you guys think there's an identity crisis? Do you guys think there's like an identity crisis between how the community feels and perceives BlackBerry and how BlackBerry perceives himself? Or do you guys think no. that that's clear? Because that's that's the, that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Because we have these conversations all the time. We we literally this is one of our biggest I think topics, not only between us but within the whole community. Like we don't know where to be. Like okay, this is where the consumer side kind of we have to distinguish that from the enterprise side, which is what BlackBerry is focusing on. Like, they haven't left the consumer side. BlackBerry will never say that, but they're focusing on the enterprise side. They're not focusing on the consumer but, side. I think yeah, I think, I think, that. I, I, yeah, yeah, but I think they do that, they're doing that, like, kind of mandatory, right? That's, that's one reason why they try to take the company private, because now you have shareholders, and you see today, nothing changed today than yesterday, and the stock went down 7%. Like, shit like that happens all the time. You have to appease a lot of people, so... What's the safest bet? We're an enterprise company, and that's it. But BlackBerry has done a lot of stuff lately. Where, you know, the minute not, they say they're, they're an enterprise, enterprise company, the minute they say they're solely an enterprise company, or the minute they even hint at dropping the consumer behind, you're gonna see the BlackBerry community as we as a whole just like plummet. Because I think that's it, it would be it would but, be a really really sad day. Let's put it that way. It would be uh, an extreme. Wait, but that's that's exactly what they, they've said though. That's exactly what we are. We're an enterprise company. That's it. So, but, but they still they have, but they still have a consumer presence. Where they never they never BBM? They're actually dropping. But, if, if but they they were, go ahead. I was just gonna say that like yeah they haven't officially ever confirmed that they're dropping the consumer market, and if they. If they do any kind of commercials, it should actually just be focused around BBM at the moment, you know, because that's like that's their multi-platform. Aside from their MDM solution, that's their multi-platform product that they have right now that they could target everybody, and they could they could be able to do those type of uh, emotional commercials that we see with. But, you know, but we, we have some with like Apple. Right? When it comes to BBM, it's not commercials; it's the product. And it's like you could talk. And JT, I found out because uh, I asked for you. You know, I uh, spoke to Jennifer from the BBM team about why the hell is it so hard to get the groups muted. Oh yeah, uh, did you really find out about that? Yeah. yeah well, my the answer was it's on the list, and I was like, is it something hard to do? And they were like, no. They were like, what's up? Is able to change. But this is the thing, right? They're 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 working on the severe like, I guess money crunch like, but. But how are you going to compete with... You came late to the game, right? And I personally think Field BBM is the best out of it. But you can't be selective. You can't have Windows phones not have BBM voice. You can't have Windows phones uh, just get channels. You can't have Android, iOS, and Windows phone not have the video chat. What are you bringing that other companies aren't? Security. No, you're not bringing security unless unless everybody decides to buy BBM Protected. You're just bringing up bringing a messaging app. Yeah, that was sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> that Chris's was sarcastic one. face. Chris's sarcastic face is such a serious face that we we miss it sometimes. I know, I know. <laughs> but but, but, it's but like, that's what I'm saying. It's true, right? Like, dude, there's not a lot of people. I know people personally who I've gotten to down BBM and they like it and they don't mind using it, but they're like, listen, I'm at work. I join one group of, of five people. The, my phone keeps going off. I want to check it like once a day, or when I have time. And that's that's a huge turnoff. And a lot of people like, you know, like how come we can't video chat? Like I thought you said there was gonna be video chat. Because at the beginning I thought it would be. 
One of the biggest things that I hope BBM is able to bring is with, when they open up the API, I hope we see more of other apps plug into BBM and allow um, the BBM experience to grow beyond just messaging. Um, one of the things that I love the most about BBM on BlackBerry 10 is the fact that I can check into Foursquare and send that check-in as my BBM status. I can tweet from Black and send um, that tweet as my BBM status without having to, you know, to copy-paste and stuff like that. Um, in the old BBL, BBLS um, uh, phones, there were games that we would, I mean, you guys remember this stuff, right? Like, we, you could you could invite other people to play games over BBM, and that like that, that stuff was really, really cool. And I feel like all that stuff has kind of gone away in the cross-platform aspect of it. So it'd be nice to have the BBM API just kind of open up and have um, more more people be able to utilize that um, kind of just tap into the potential of what BBM could potentially be. And I'm really hoping that this beta that comes up, um, they mentioned how they have, um, they're excited because these new features are aimed at exploring and expanding your network. That was the that was the exact quote. So I'm I'm really curious as to what it's going to be, and I just I pray that it's not going to be another subscription based type of thing. They, they could offer a lot of subscriptions, but don't take away from the main value of what BBM is. I agree with you. Well, yeah, that's the problem. I mean, you have you have it, you know Facebook Messenger um, just launched. The, they had their FA Developer Conference, and they completely just blew up what Facebook Messenger is. A lot of people hate Facebook, but they have over a billion users. So a lot of people are using Facebook Messenger. 700 million or something like that are using, 600 million, something like that are using Facebook Messenger. So these are the these are the people that BBM are, are competing against. They're competing against the WhatsApps, they're competing against the lines, they're competing against Facebook Messenger, and they're competing against text message. So you gotta give them more than just, oh well, security, because Frankly, a lot of people don't really, don't really care, and that's kind of it, it's yeah, sad. Yeah, that's true. They don't. It's they not, don't. but it's not sad. You don't like that's me, right? And, and you know, nobody's more diehard Blackberry than me. But dude, I don't care when I'm BBMing Lucas. Like, yo, how was your day? If somebody sees that that BBM, that's just ridiculous. People are just going nuts sometimes with security. Yes, you need it, and it's totally needed. But if you're gonna bring BBM, you have to differentiate it. If BBM tomorrow launched a, a, the the video app. And the uh, and the BBM voice over all four major devices, they will gain a lot more customers. But they you know, the way it's going now is just a regular messaging app. What were you gonna say, Lucas? But again, oh sorry, Lucas, before you finish, but just the point that uh, JC made uh, was that him and his group, like, how awesome is that? They didn't know what movie to pick. They just. They just did a screen share and watched a couple of trailers together and decided what what they wanted to do. Like they need to bring those awesome features if they're gonna be a multi-platform company. Yeah, exactly. They can't like I understand if they want to do a staggered rollout for certain features, but I mean, it's been what like a, uh, over a year now, right? Since they they released it for uh, iOS and Android, and there's still no video chat available for those platforms. And I think from what we heard, it was like a bandwidth issue, right? Like, weren't they trying to... The, I think it was more of, a, like, they don't want to light up any more servers. Like, money issue. That, like, honestly, it's a money issue. Right. Because, JT, where, weren't we together when they were saying that, when I asked them how would how would a video chat would look in, um, in other platforms, and they were like, oh, well, they got to work into... You know, to give the the screen share. I'm sorry. I asked how how the screen share would look. I think it was I think it was me and you. We yeah, when we were interviewing it. David David right. Perlo, or I think I forget what his, how to pronounce his last name. Yeah, the, and that's exactly what he said. That they were exploring um, just different ways to be able to um, bring these features uh, to iOS and Android. But the quote was the quote that we got was that they want all platforms to be. Um, equal in terms of what they can and can't do. So, um, again, I think, you know, we, we could talk ad nauseum about this over and over, and hopefully, I mean, it'll be really exciting to see what this new these new features that are going to come up in this week's beta are. Like I said, my only hope is that they're not a subscription-based, they're not subscription-based uh, features, because in the recent updates, the new stuff that we've gotten 
is all subscription based. They're trying to monetize everything. And while I understand that BlackBerry has to do that, it's not the sexiest thing in the world to be competing against these gigantic messengers who are all free. And you're smaller, have a smaller base. You're trying to attract more people. Yet some of the newest stuff that you're introducing is all subscription paid uh, stuff. So I, it feels like it's rushing too. It feels like it's rushing to to make money, right? Like they're not letting it mature. Uh, like you could, you could, like there were other avenues to to monetize it. Like Lucas, I think I think I, I think I was with you when we asked about this. I could be wrong. Like I don't remember too many meetings, but. Remember, we asked about what about a subscription to be able to call through BBM Voice to landlines to like regular phone voice numbers. Voice over IP, yep, voice over IP. Right, and we said like I would pay for that. I would, but but I won't pay for retracting messages. Like I think that's that's something I don't appreciate. But there's so many other avenues to make BBM uh, oh, money, and, and stickers is a great way of doing it. Most people I know have a lot of stickers, but you know stuff like that. If you want to be a consumer, you want to buy stickers, fine, you buy some stickers. But that's about it. I, yeah, and I like how I mean I understand how BlackBerry is allowing you to kind of like pick and choose which uh, which features that you can subscribe to. But I kind of also wish that they would do like a just one complete package that allows you access to all of the features at once. And that way, you just have one subscription to maintain and not multiple different subscriptions. But I, I agree with I agree with what you said, JT. I think that um. You know they're a little money hungry at the moment, and so they're they're kind of pushing out some half baked uh, products through BBM. And so this is this is the other issue, right? Like, what is BBM? Is BBM a consumer, or is it is it an enterprise, or is it both? Because it's such a mixed service. Like, I get it. BBM protected for enterprise, huge charge. That's fine. And then you have you know my personal pin subscription, which is consumer. So you're obviously aiming BBM for everywhere. You gotta treat it as such. You can't have fast it one way or the other. Isn't that why they came up with the term prosumer? <laughs> People who you, guys, you guys know that, that that's been there since BB BB five, I think. Like it would say like when it doesn't it used to say not consumer agreement, it used to say prosumer agreement on the old blackberries. That's a term they've used for a while. But what is a prosumer? We've been through this. As a as a prosumer is somebody who could who consumes at a pro level? <laughs> you know what I mean. I want to be able to do my Netflix, my emails, my battery to last, and if I'm gonna BBM and video chat, video chat my wife, I want to be able to do that too. Yeah, he said. BlackBerry definitely has an uphill battle when it comes to BBM, but um, hopefully they can continue to get their teams to work harder on on the products and. Basically, I guess what I really have always hoped for is that they just don't release half-baked products. I know when BBM first released for multi-platform, it was kind of a flop, and obviously we saw um, Andrew Bakking, I think is his name. He was the head of BBM. He's left Black right now. It was kind of a disastrous release for him. So hopefully, you know, I would really appreciate. I'd rather appreciate um, them take the time to roll out these products. Rather than just kind of getting out fast, fast, and then get try and get uh, revenue from them, I think it would actually be more beneficial, like what you have said, JT, with getting out solid products and then monetizing it later. And you know, you'll uh, you'll reap what you sow. If you push out a great product, and you know, people will be happy about it. Then so they'll they'll feel more compelled to buy a subscription than rather releasing a half baked product. It's pretty shitty, and they'll probably never come back. I know that's a lot of issues. People who initially downloaded BBM on iPhone or Android, they don't use it anymore. You know, it was it was a terrible experience. I I um, I tried it out when it first released just to see, you know, can a BlackBerry user go from BBM on BlackBerry 10 to iOS or Android? And Android was definitely the closest experience to BlackBerry 10. But if you were an an iPhone user, it almost felt like BlackBerry was trolling you. Like the BBM experience on iOS was just miserable. It was absolutely terrible. I was really kind of uh, embarrassed uh, when I would tell friends that, "Oh, you got to download BBM," and then it was just so awful that uh, it was just almost uh, unusable. So I really hope that BlackBerry just kind of slows their roll, just takes their time more, put in, uh, get in this like finesse of 
of uh, rolling out great products and and not these half baked uh, products we've seen so far. I love I do love BBM protected. There's still a lot of bugs though, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, BBM meetings was awesome too. We got we got a chance to use BBM meetings. We didn't get to touch on this. Yeah. Uh, and I know I know we're gonna be wrapping up right now, but at BBM meetings, it, we who was it? It was you, uh, Chris, Nico, myself, and Ross. I think that we all got to use BBM meetings. Um, that, and that was huge. that was pretty awesome. That was huge. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, great, great feature, um, and it worked flawlessly. I don't think we really had any connection issues other than like Ross's phone like exploded when uh, when he got a phone call though. That's I think that might be like a, a little bug that might need to get worked out. But that's what that I wish. That could be Ross's phone. Uh, yeah, it could, it could be, be Ross's yeah. phone too. But I was on my iPhone and it worked. It worked beautifully. You guys were on your BlackBerry, so I mean, you know, even through cross-platform, that was it was really, really nice to see a solid product that didn't have. We didn't lose connection once. I think until the end, when you know everybody just disconnected, we all just you know said bye and stuff. But and that was I wasn't even on Wi-Fi. I was on my cellular network. So that's I was kind driving. Of, remember, it was it worked. That's well. right. Yeah, it was great. Chris, like it's really clear connection. I don't think anyone. Do so you guys think maybe or... that's why they're not bringing BBM video to iPhone and Android? Because it's obviously possible. That, that, I think that just clicked in my head. It's obviously possible to have BBM video on iPhone and Android if you can do it with BBM meetings, but not within the BBM app. That's kind of that's a little suspicious now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're putting like a conspiracy theory right there because right, like if if people yeah. want. Video get BBM meetings. I guess I don't know. It just seems like yeah, yeah, like everything that uh, any of these extra features they're trying to uh, to I don't want to say price gouge, but you know they're they're trying to monetize and get revenue from. Which by all means, you know that's that's okay because the company needs to become profitable. But I just wish that if they say they're going to do something, I wish they would act upon it. You know, and we've already uh, I'm not going to bring it up, but. We've already uh, okay. I will. We've, we've already <laughs> been we've already been let down with the uh, the playbook. Uh, I, I won't go any further. You mean the psyche tablet? Oh wait, that's the, the that, that's another no, thing. No. Never mind. No, not that. <laughs> hey JC, what did you think about the psyche tablet? Do you think that was a good idea to make a tablet like that? Make it out of a Samsung? Um, I don't know. I'm. They've they've been working with Samsung together, I guess, and that was very good. I mean, but I mean, I mean for cons like I wouldn't see myself getting one. Yeah, it's like twenty like, twenty three hundred dollars. How much is it? It's, yeah, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, some, yeah. So, yeah. At least it's not like an Apple Watch, right? <laughs> Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand dollars. You can buy yourself like eight Secu tablets for the price of one Apple Watch. <laughs> All right, dudes. I think it's about time. Chris is uh, yes. Chris is about to eat his arm. He's so hungry. <laughs> yeah, I guess a quick recap. Um, BlackBerry slider, from what we've heard, first octa-core BlackBerry in history. Um, so that should be great. Look forward to uh, more details on that. Um, we've got BlackBerry's back to black again uh, for this qu past quarter. Earnings report, so that's great. Hopefully, the company continues to uh, to remain profitable, and um, we'll see even further revenue increase with the software. Uh, BlackBerry Leap coming shortly. Uh, the pre-orders are now available, so you can get that device 275 outright, or if uh, what Nico heard is correct, zero dollars on a new two-year agreement uh, in Canada. So that would be pretty, be pretty huge. Uh, then, um, yeah. The only thing I want to say is, uh, if you if you guys want to were in the market for no touch, go pick up the leap, and I promise you guys you won't regret it. Like, I had a good, I I really enjoy that device. I, I holding it actually, it's a little weird because it's not as wide as the Z3, right? Like, it's not really like a like a Z3 with different specs. It's a, actually a little like, I want to say a little better made, like. You guys gotta check it out. It's a, the screen feels a little more narrow, but I don't know. It just looks really good, and and it felt really good in the hand too. So, I mean, I put it through the works. I didn't have any issue with the freezing, slowing down, or anything like that. So, I uh, I would highly suggest you people pick one up. Definitely. And of course, we had our special guest, 
Jake Colloy, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Thank you for all the great videos that you've been pushing out. We look forward to the next one. And, uh, of course, thank you, Chris, JT, and Nico, for joining on the MPV Live podcast. And a very big thanks to everybody who watched this podcast and will listen to it later. So thank you guys very much. Hope you have a great week. And uh, we'll see you again next Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Good night. Good night.